So in this video, you can see that I've actually gone ahead and created my axle in advance. After that, we're going to take all of our parts, bushing, bracket, wheel, and axle, and we're going to assemble them together in a single assembly. So let's go ahead by clicking on the home button, and we've covered the parts section, so let's go ahead and do an assembly. So here's my assembly right over here too, and you'll notice one of the very first buttons I have is place. So this is actually allows me to place my parts. So I'm gonna click on place, and here's my desktop. You can see all the different parts I have. I'm gonna start with the largest part, which is gonna be my brackets. Click on open, a left click, and then I'm just gonna do a right click, okay, to accept that parts. So let's go ahead and click on another part. Let's grab my axle open, again, click on OK, and then let's get the rest of the parts. As far as my bushing, I actually need two of these. So I'm just gonna go click, click, right click, OK. So you'll notice that we actually have uh, joint or constraint. We're gonna be using constraints. Constraint is just basically trying to get one part lined up with another part. Now, when you constrain something, you can actually constrain it by surfaces or by axes. So what we're going to be doing is leaving the default right over here because we want everything mated according to axes. And so let's do that by going ahead. And I'm going to kind of take my mouse and put my mouse over this axle just like this and click on that. So I can see the lengthwise dotted line. And then come over here and you'll see if I can actually just hover over and get the uh, uh, axes as well too for this bracket. And there it is, you can see that they're made it together according to axes. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of moving this and you kind of see that it can only be moved and constrained or tied together uh, essentially one way. So that's going to be for that one. Okay, let's go ahead and do the bushings next. So again, constrain. Try finding the long axes, left click. Coming over here. When I do click on OK, I'm still going to have to take this bushing and I'm going to have to sort of move it as best as I possibly can so it's flush. In the real world, what I'd probably do is I'd probably end up putting a little weld in there and packing it with grease so there's less friction, friction as the uh, wheel uh, revolves. OK, this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to actually have to rotate this so um, this end is going to be lined up on this side. Here's what I mean. If I don't do that, and I go ahead and try and click on OK, you'll notice that when I move this, you can see that this part should be on the other side. So let's go ahead and put that back the way it was. So in order to sort of rotate it, I'm just going to grab this button right over here called Free Rotate. And when I do that, I'm just going to try best rotating it so it's kind of in the orientation that it's going to be constrained. That should work. Now I'm going to go constrain, find my long axis here, to here, click on OK. Now when I move this back, I can get this just flush fit, just like that. Almost done. One more left. So we want to constrain this through the long axis. And one, click on OK and grab the wheel and move it somewhat like that so it's in the middle. Okay, let's just do a quick revolve. Uh, it's not perfect, but I can sort of play around with this ever so slightly. That looks a bit better. And that should do it just like that. Okay, so there's my wheel assembly, and you can see my uh, part stamped just like that. All right, so let's actually talk about materials next. Before we do that, quick save. And I'm going to call this wheel assembly. Let's go yes to all and click on OK. OK, so let me go into the bushing here. I want to give this a different particular color. Um, let's make this kind of like a polished steel. So without any surfaces clicked, I'm going to come over to default and scroll down. And what I'm looking for is a kind of a steel polish. That should do it just like that. All right, now watch what happens when I come to my wheel assembly. Nothing happens until I do a quick save update, then come over here 
and you'll notice that this is now actually brushed. So same thing with our brackets. Without any surfaces selected, I'm going to find that brushed steel, or sorry, polished steel. Do a quick save. And you'll see it's updated right over here too. And that pretty much takes care of it. Um, my axle, you can do that. I sort of already changed the color in advance. Let's do the wheel next. So if I wanted to actually do only certain features or certain faces a particular color, I could just click on that surface and you'll notice it's highlighted on the inner of the wheel. And then what I can do is I can give it a different color if I wanted to. Now, so if you want to do customizable surface paint features or material parts, um, that's the way you do it. Otherwise, I'm just going to go like this and just deselect everything. And then I'm just going to look for rubber. And then you can see that this one is still actually red. Kind of looks cool. But you know what? If I was to put this in production, it'd probably cost a lot of extra money. So let's just go ahead and put this also as rubber. There we go. So let's click on save. And then there we go. So we want one last part and we actually want to go ahead and just do a quick render of this. Now rendering in Autodesk Inventor is very, very easy after you've applied your materials. Just requires us to specify a few settings and then we can just save the image afterwards. So let's go ahead to the view tab. By clicking on that, we want to change the visual style. Anytime you render with ray trace, you're going to always have to put it in realistic. Of course, what you can do is you can make it like different kind of styles, watercolor, monochrome, hand sketched if you want to for a little bit of kind of authenticity that you actually sketched it out by hand. But let's just put it into realistic mode. You'll notice that as soon as we put it into realistic mode through here, that our ray tracing is actually enabled. If you want, you can put ground shadows if you'd like. You can see the ground shadow. Um, you can also go with reflections too. Uh, I'm not too keen on the reflections, so I'm just going to turn that off, but I'll leave that completely up to you. So from there, what I plan to do is do a ray trace. Now you do have three settings for ray trace. You have draft quality, low, and high. So by default, you're actually in low quality. Um, draft is okay. It takes a few minutes. I don't recommend high. Typically takes a long time. So I'm just going to leave it in low and let it finish off, and then we're going to save the image. And I'm going to save it onto the desktop. The reason why we need the image is very simple. We're going to actually need to put it on one of the sheets. Okay, so the render is done. Let's click on save. And by default, it's a bitmap, which is a large size file. I don't like bitmaps. So instead, let's actually put it into a JPEG. Very common format, especially for your camera phones and smart devices. And almost every image on the internet is going to be JPEG. Not every, but a lot of them anyways. So let's click on save. Okay, so we've got that all saved up. I'm just going to just do a quick save on everything else to make sure. And hitting my desktop here, let's have a look at our render. Here it is. Great. Heck, I can even crop it if I want to. Let's get rid of some parts that we don't quite need. That should do it. And again, I probably want to put it on my desktop. Just going to make it a little easier for me because you'll see why I've got lots and lots of different files. Eventually, what you want to do is put this in a proper folder so all your files are organized, and it's always a good idea to either put it on the network or your C drive. Okay, perfect. Let's just close that off. So in the next video, what we're going to plan to do is start putting our various parts onto a sheet, and we're going to add dimensions. Each sheet is going to have its own part with extensive dimensions, very much like what I have assembled right over here. So in total, we got four parts, bushing, bracket, axle, and wheel. You'll notice that I have an exploded assembly over here, but I also have a render of my assembly too. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, so next video, like I said, we're going to actually start putting individual parts on sheets and complete with title block, annotations, and dimensions. Thanks for now.